In this video, we use Git based source code control to manage Azure Automation Runbooks. System admins have been using files and folders to store and manage automation files since batch scripting was available. A Git based repository is a better way to manage scripts. In this video, we synchronize a Git repo with Azure Automation to put version control on our runbooks. Before we get started, please like, subscribe, share with a friend, and let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Become a member for early access to videos, ad-free while private, and check out my courses on Azure Virtual Desktop and Hybrid Identities with Azure AD on Udemy.com. Back to it, we're gonna set up source control integration with Azure Automation in this video. The example uses Azure DevOps, but there's support for GitHub as well. Before we start, why should we use source control integration with Runbooks? Well, using source control gives us versioning so we can see previous versions of the runbook. It supports branching as well as the ability to review and approve code used for the runbooks. It also works in a distributed environment where team members may be working on the same project or runbook files. If you're not familiar with Git and how to set up an environment to use Git, don't worry. Check out my multi-part blog series on getting started with Git. The link is below. This video assumes you're familiar with Git. Let's take a look at how this works. The flow is fairly simple. We create a repo for our Azure Automation Runbooks. This example uses Azure DevOps, but GitHub will work also. Then we create our runbook in a Git-enabled editor such as VS Code. In the example coming up, it's a simple PowerShell script. We then commit the file to the repo. Once we've committed the runbook, Source Control sends a webhook invocation to Azure Automation. This triggers a synchronization and the runbook is added to the account. One thing to note, automatic synchronization between the repo and the Azure Automation account only works if it's a public automation account. If you're using private endpoints, there's no way for the webhook invocation to reach the automation account. You can still use source control integration, it just has to be synchronized manually. You'll need an Azure DevOps repo to follow along, but you can also use GitHub instead. You'll also need an Azure Automation account. Check out the links below for information on getting started with either of these. Let's jump into Azure DevOps to get started. Here we are in Azure DevOps. If you're using Azure DevOps, be sure the third-party application by OAuth is enabled. From Azure DevOps, go to the Organization Settings. This is the Organization Settings, not the Project Settings. Go to Policies under Security. Make sure third-party application access by OAuth is enabled. If not, you may get a source control security token is invalid error. Next, we'll go into the Azure portal and into the subscription. This example will use a simple script that starts VMs based on a tag value. This is just what I came up as an example. For the script to work, we need to give the automation account managed identity rights to start VMs. Let's do that by giving the managed identity VM contributor rights to the subscription. This could be scoped down to more specific role if needed. From the subscription, we'll go to Access Control IAM. Add a role assignment. Look for a virtual machine contributor. There it is. Next. In members, we need to add the automation account managed identity. We'll select members. The automation account name is the same name as the system assigned managed identity. We'll assign that role. If you're using user assigned managed identities, be sure to select that identity. Also, if you're testing with a different script, this specific permission may not need to be applied. If your script interacts with Azure, just make sure it has sufficient permissions to do so. We'll go to Review and Assign, and Assign. We have to change permissions in one more spot. We need to give the managed identity rights to modify the Azure Automation account. Specifically, it has to add and update runbooks. Let's go to the Automation account. We'll go to Access Control. Add a role assignment, select contributor. Select member, 
and we'll search for that managed identity again, same name as the account if you're using system assigned managed identities. And again, if you're using a user assigned managed identity, you'll have to select that. Let's go to review and assign and assign that role. Now that we have all the rights and permissions in place, let's configure source control. Go to the automation account and find source control under account settings. Click add at source control. Give it a name, Azure Automation Test for this example. Select the source control type. We have Azure DevOps Git, Azure DevOps TFVC, and GitHub. This example will use Azure DevOps Git. Next, we have to authenticate. The account we're authenticating with has to have rights to add this connection. Now that we're authenticated, we can select our repository. This project is called Azure Automation 01. That's the project in Azure DevOps. And now we select a branch. I'll use dev for this example. You can select a folder in the branch. For example, if you had other files in the repo, you could create a runbook directory and keep the runbooks in there and only synchronize that. I'll leave this example as the default. Set auto sync to on. With this setting, every time we commit, the runbook will get updated. If you leave it off or your automation account is configured to use private endpoints, you will need to sync manually. We can publish the runbook automatically. If we leave it on, any changes to our runbooks will get published right away. If we set it off, new runbooks will be added as unpublished, and any changes to existing runbooks will go in as edited versions. Let's change it to off. This way we can see what happens when we make changes with the runbook. You can add a description if you'd like, and then click Save. That will set up source code integration. It shows the connection under source control. We can view and edit the settings here. There's also an option to sync in this view. If you disabled auto sync or private endpoints prevents auto sync, you can initiate a synchronization from here. Let's close that out. Let's start by cloning our repo to VS Code. Let's open up the repo in VS Code. Let's go to clone, and we'll just clone to VS Code. I'll select the location. Okay, here we are in VS Code and I've cloned the repo. So the first thing I'm gonna do is make sure I select the correct branch. Now we can create the runbook. PowerShell files are converted to runbooks. The runbook will have the same name as the file. We'll call this one startvmbytag.ps1. Now we can create the script. Next, I'll add the code. This is a simple runbook that starts VMs by specifying a tag. Lab group equals auto start. I'm just using this as an example. The actual code doesn't matter. Now we can save the script. Next, let's commit our change and push the code to the repo. Now, if we go to Azure DevOps and do a refresh, there's our file. Let's go into the automation account next. From here, we'll go to jobs. Synchronization isn't instantaneous. It can take a minute. The process hyphen source control webhook job is the job that starts the sync. If you run into problems, verify this job took place without errors. That completed, now let's go to runbooks. We have a runbook reporting as new. It's not published because we configured it not to publish new runbooks. Let's open it and we'll go to edit. 
from here we can go into the test pane and test the run book. We'll give that a minute to run. Okay, that finished and it looks good. It looks like a VM was started. Let's close the test pane. And now that we know it's good, let's publish the run book. And again, if we automatically published it, we wouldn't have had to take that step. Now, if we go back to our run books, it shows as published. Let's update this run book next. And before we do that, let's just take a look at source control again. And view our settings. If published run book was on, any changes will get integrated into the published run book and any future jobs will use those updated settings. We're set to auth. Let's see what happens with that. We'll close this and go to run books. Now let's go to VS Code and update our run book. We'll just add a comment. So we'll save this. Next, we'll commit and push the change. Give it a minute to finish syncing, and let's go back to the Azure Automation account. Let's look at jobs. And we can see a second job has ran. Let's go back to Runbooks. You may have to refresh. You may have to hit refresh a couple times or even exit this view and go back to it. It does take a few seconds between when you make a change and when it shows up in the portal. But now our runbook shows it's in edit mode. Let's open the runbook. And first, let's view the code. This view shows what is published, what will run the next time the job runs. Notice the comment is missing. Let's close that out and go to edit. This version we just pushed with a comment. We have to publish those changes manually because we disabled auto publish. Also, this is a one-way sync. If we make a change in the edit pane, that change will be overwritten the next time it syncs. If using source control, you should only make changes and then push them to the repo. Once we're ready, we can publish the runbook. And now if we go to view, you can see our changes reflected in the code. The next job will use any changes we pushed. Let's close that out. If we want to remove a runbook, we simply remove it from our source control. Let's go back to VS Code and remove the runbook. We'll delete the runbook. Go into source control. We'll add that and then commit and push the change. The change is committed. Now let's go back to the Azure Automation account and run books. We can watch the status by going to jobs. Looks like it's still running. We'll give it a minute to finish. That completed. Let's go to run books. And our run book is gone. That is how to use source control with Azure Automation. I hope that helps you better understand how to use source control integration with Azure DevOps. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and thanks for watching.